maybe I'm sharing too much, but we become very intimate with the spirits that we call on regularly, right? Like each of them seems to have a different presence and personality. You know, I laugh a lot with Waikisha, you know, and I didn't meet her in her body, right? Yeah. I met her through this work. The founder or co-founder of Black Lives Matter, according to the scriptures, would be a witch. This is according to her beliefs. A witch who conjures up the dead, talks to the dead in a seance form. This is from her lips. It's a very important practice. Um, hashtags are for us are way more than a hashtag. It is um, literally almost resurrecting a spirit so they can work through us to get the work that we need to get done. I started to feel personally connected and responsible and accountable to them, um, both from a deeply political place, but also from a deeply spiritual place. And um, always, you know, in, our, in, in my tradition, you offer things that that Her your family. loved one who passed away would want, you know, um, whether it's like honey or tobacco, things like that. And that's, it's so important, not just for us, to be in direct relationship to our people who've passed, but also for them to know they've, we've remembered them. Um, I, I believe so many of them work through us. This is extremely dangerous to the nation, the calling of the dead. The Bible calls it familiar spirits. Give yourself a moment on this important topic to understand these scriptures with me. The Bible record is often called the witch of Endor, and in the book of Nahum, where witchcraft causes great nations to crumble like it would like for the USA. I have found that people are so far away from the Bible, they think that the witches spoken of in scriptures is a fairy tale or conspiracy theory, or maybe makes a great movie. <laughs> However, it is the truth. The Black Lives Matter founder confesses the power of familiar spirits. That is, the listening, obeying of the dead, or seance in the Bible, again, is called familiar spirits. The story of Saul and Samuel the prophet will show you the power of those with familiar spirits, the woman of Endor, and how that can work today. To understand this, you have to see the historical biblical account. King Saul of Israel and Samuel the prophet was the spiritual leader of the one true God. King Saul would inquire of Samuel the prophet to make sure he was within God's will when doing things like <laughs> go to war. So time passes. Saul knows that David will be his successor. Saul did not want that and started disobeying God and trying to kill David. So God will not talk to Saul anymore. Now David is hiding out in another nation for his life. Saul wants to know if he can go up against that the nation and that is kind of an enemy anyway to Israel. So Samuel the prophet is now dead. So Saul cannot go to Samuel the prophet for godly guidance because he is what? Dead. Got to make that point. <laughs> so Saul gets the bright idea to go to a seance, a person with a familiar spirit to wake up Samuel the prophet who is dead. Again, got to keep saying that. Now, turning in the Bible to 1 Samuel chapter 28, we'll read verse 3. And the, the verse says again, <laughs> now Samuel was dead and all Israel had lamented him and buried him in Ramah, even in his own city. And Saul had put away those that had familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land. So he did the right thing at first. So as time went by and he didn't get, couldn't get any more answers from God, that's when he decides to go to the seance. Verse four. 
And the Philistines gathered themselves together and came and pitched in Shunem. And Saul gathered all Israel together and they pitched in Gilba. So they're thinking about going to war. And David is hiding over there with the Philistines, sort of. And when Saul saw the host of the Philistines, he was afraid. And his heart greatly trembled. That's verse 5. Verse 6. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not. Didn't talk to Saul anymore. Neither by dreams, nor by Urim, nor by prophets. 1 Samuel 28, verse 7. Then said Saul to his servant, Seek me a woman that hath a familiar spirit that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servant said to him, Behold, there is a woman that hath a, a familiar spirit at Endor. Thus the witch of Endor. Verse 8. And Saul disguised himself and put on other raiment and he went and two men with him, and they came to the woman by night and said, I pray thee, divine unto me by the familiar spirit, and bring me, bring me him up, whom I shall name unto thee. In verse 28, 11, then said the woman, whom shall I bring up unto thee? And he said, bring me up Samuel the prophet. Now, we just read Samuel was dead back in verse 3. Keep up with that. 1 Samuel 28, verse 12, just the A part, just the first half. You can read this on your own. And when the woman saw Samuel, what she really saw at first is in verse 13. So it, verse 12 says, and the woman saw Samuel. Now, verse 13, that's just the first part. Now, in verse 13, it says, and the king said unto her, be not afraid. Saul said unto her, Be not afraid. For what sawest thou? And the woman said unto Saul, I saw God's ascending out of the earth. Out of the earth. God's ascending out of the earth. Samuel is dead. What or who or what was this? What is it? Now, I'm going to read 1 Samuel 28, 13 in what is called the Amplified Bible. And this is the same verse in the Amplified Bible. This is what it says. Verse 13. The king said unto her, Be not afraid. What do you see? The woman said to Saul, I see a God, tearing fire, a terrifying superhuman being, coming up out of the earth. Now, does that sound like Samuel? A man of God? That is not Samuel. He is dead. Now we're getting to the term familiar spirit. The term familiar spirit means exactly what it says. A spirit familiar with the ways and personality of the one dead. Familiar spirit. Get it? It's a familiar spirit. A fallen angel or evil spirit knows exactly how people act and can mimic that person. That's what a familiar spirit is. Now you see the term familiar spirit, familiar with the one who's dead. They've been running up and down. Well, I'll just show you the verse. All right. In Job chapter one, verse seven. And the Lord said unto Satan, whence comest thou? <laughs> then Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down it. They're still doing that today. And they know us. And it's important to them to get rid of the word out of the world. They really know those people. So this evil spirit knew Samuel the prophet. And made itself look like Samuel the prophet. The familiar spirit did. And it told her what to say. She was the only one that could see it and convinced Saul it was truly Samuel the prophet. The spirit set Saul up to die because Saul listened to the evil spirit. When the answer to Saul to live was to make amends with David. That's all he had to do. Make amends with David. Let's look at this in 1 Chronicles 10.13. 
So Saul died for his transgressions, which he committed against the Lord, even against the word of the Lord, which he kept not, and also for asking counsel of one that had a familiar spirit to inquire of it. See, there's your answer over in Chronicles. The woman of Endor didn't die. <laughs> the person that listened to that advice of that of the familiar spirit died. Saul was the was murdered. The woman, witch of Endor, was safe until the familiar spirit is done with them use, using them. Then usually they die off. <laughs> now let me show you the robbery and the riots behind witchcraft. In Naomi, chapter 3, 1 through 4, I'm only going to read 1 and 4. Verse 1 says, Woe to the bloody city. <laughs> it is all full of lies and, next word, robbery. <laughs> the prey departed not. They, didn't, they don't give up robbing. They just keep doing it. Now, verse 4 says, because of the multitude of whoredoms. Why was the city bloody and robbery? It says, because of the multitude of the whoredoms of the well-favored harlot, the mistress of witchcraft. <laughs> witchcraft, see. Now, the Black Lives Matter is not on this level yet, but that's the goal, to get to this level. All right, let me keep reading, reading and I'll show you. Witchcraft that selleth nations through her whoredoms and families through her witchcraft. Sell them a bunch of crap. <laughs> All right, let's explain this. The city or nation of Nineveh is the harlot. See, it's talking about an entire nation, not a person. That The entire nation itself is a witchcraft. So the city of or nation, Nineveh, is the harlot. A whole nation can be called a harlot if it is full of witchcraft. Nineveh was such a nation. At first, it was a military stronghold and an example to the world like the USA is. See? A harlot engages in whoredoms. What this means is they all have left the one true God for idol gods. It's not having sex with someone. <laughs> It's talking about the engagement with familiar spirits, the engagement with evil. And it doesn't mean having sex with <laughs> spirits. It just means they obey them. They like them. They offer them something in exchange like money or be a playboy or something like that. Familiar spirits. Evil spirits that hate the true God. These are familiar spirits. These are the people. The whoredoms. They get into witchcraft and they get into familiar spirits, which are evil spirits. They hate the one true God. It can manifest itself in sexual perversion and often does. Today, sometimes they think they are worshiping the one true God because they really see stuff and hear stuff. <laughs> this easily happens because people are talked out of the fact that scriptures can be understood and God is the author of it. They say it's just your opinion. So they never go and look and feel like the word of God will fit together. And it does. And that's the key to getting to the truth when scriptures on a subject fit together. The simple goal of familiar spirits is to get rid of the one true God. Or Christians today. These familiar spirits also motivate people by lying signs and wonders, false facts. I just said that. There are many followers in the media, all through the social media, by employees who indulge in this type of stuff. They look for legal ways to shut down truth, knowingly and unknowingly. So, I got a lot of this information from the Hamilton Corner. Uh, so, go to the Hamilton Corner for more information on the founder of Black Lives Matter. 
and what came out of her mouth. I'll link it below. Leave a comment, a certain disciple. But wait, there's more, clip three. When we say the names, right? So we speak their names, we say her name, say their names. We do that all the time, that you kind of invoke that spirit and then those spirits actually become present with you. Did y'all hear that? Now y'all see all of this, the NBA, all on the jersey, say her name. They're not doing what you think they're doing. You think they're just honoring people. They are conjuring up spirits.